Good afternoon, everyone. I am Beatrix Fogarashi, and I would like to present my nine-month um, progress. So I work as a psychologist at the Division of Pancreatic Diseases at Samaritan University, and my vision is incorporating psychological help into healthcare system, especially in Hungary, which can result in shorter recovery time. For this, my mission is to prove the importance of this psychological help and to provide bigger recognition in healthcare. For this, I will use different methods during my PhD, and uh, let's discuss them in details. My first project is psychological, is the title of my for, first project is Psychological Interventions Improve Mental Health in, in Inflammatory Digestive System Diseases. Here you can see the status of my project. I am writing the article, unfortunately, without the final results. We are waiting for three uh, meta-regression analyses, and my plan is to, to submit the article in the clinical psychology review. Few words around the, about the background. Around 11% 11, around 11 of the population suffers from uh, chronic inflammatory digestive system diseases. We also know that psychological stress can have a negative effect uh, on gastrointestinal function. But most importantly, we know that psychological interventions can improve the outcomes of the original diseases and it can prevent developing comorbid uh, mental illnesses. Because we don't have evidence-based protocol for the psychological interventions, our aim is to evaluate the efficacy and safety of different kind of psychological interventions in this subpopulation. A clinical question is, are psychological interventions beneficial in inflammatory digestive system diseases? The investigated population are patients receiving standard of care with inflammatory digestive system diseases. And uh, we will compare psychological interventions with uh, no psychological intervention, the standard of care. The, we will have, we have a lot of outcomes. For example, level, level of depression, anxiety, disease activity, quality of life, self-efficacy, and you will see on the other slides what else. Um, based on our hypothesis, psychological interventions can be official and they can improve the outcomes of uh, inflammatory digestive system diseases. Here you can see the systematic search and the selection process of the project. And as you see, we started around 13,000 articles and we ended with 68 uh, uh, articles for the full text. A few words about the outcomes. We can categorize the, uh, the data based on the follow-up time. We have post-intervention measurement time, meaning that the outcomes are measured right after the last intervention ended, and we have follow-up measurement, uh, which means that they measure the outcomes after a certain period of time, short-term, mid-term, or long-term. Here you can see we have mental health outcomes and also psych uh, physical health outcomes. And in the bracelet, you can see that how many articles we have in the certain um, measurement time, post-intervention or follow-up time. And as you can see, there is a large heterogeneity based on the selection of the, the outcomes. My first outcome is depression. And as you can see, we have 23 articles um, in which we found depression data. And we calculated standardized mean differences due to the different scales, uh, scales used in the articles. As you can see, the heterogeneity is high. It is due to the different populations and scales used in the different um, articles. As you can see, we have a significant result, result, meaning that in the intervention group, the depression score was significantly lower. There was a bigger, significantly bigger change in the depression score in the intervention group than in the control group. Here you can see the SMD interpretation, meaning that we have a medium effect in this case. 
my second outcome is anxiety, and this is also a very important one because around 30% of the population of this population suffers from anxiety, and it can have a negative effect uh, for uh, self-management, for example. Here you can also see that um, in the intervention group there was a significantly higher change uh, reduction in the anxiety scores. My third outcome is quality of life. Um, I should emphasize that higher quality of life scores mean better quality of life. So as you can see, with psychological interventions, we have higher um, change in the quality of life scores. And since they used very different kind of uh, scales in the articles, we had to have um, separate mental quality of life scores. Um, and as you can see, with the intervention, we also have um, larger change in the intervention group. Okay, so here we have all of the other outcomes with no significant effects. Unfortunately, in the um, expect from the anxiety, depression, and quality of life, we couldn't uh, calculate the change. Uh, data, so we have the after uh, data, so it has limited um, conclusion in this case, and these are not significant results, especially if we take a look at the physical health. So our summary, uh, we have strengths in our article and study that's comprehensive. We have a comprehensive overview and interpretation of the results in the main inflammatory digestive system diseases. We only use RCTs, meaning the highest level of evidence, and uh, we have a high number of patients and studies included. We also have limitations, so um, we have a limited number of studies within the subgroups and there is the heterogeneous population scales and measurement times in the articles. A conclusion is that psychological interventions can be effective in reducing depression, anxiety, and it can improve quality of life in inflammatory digestive system diseases. Implication for practice, um, psychological intervention should be a part of standard patient care in every gastroenterology ward. And uh, based on the data and the articles, we will have to have an intervention protocol for these interventions. The implication for research, we have to have a standardized scales for measurement and identify the most effective form of the interventions. Moreover, we have to investigate the effect of a repeated interventions with long-term follow-up in this population. My second project is uh, about the interventions on alcohol and nicotine consumption. A few words around, about the background. There is a strong positive association between smoking and alcohol use, and uh, we also know that cessation outcomes for patients who are addicted to alcohol and smoking uh, are generally worse than those patients who are, who are only addicted to one substance. Most importantly, there is no protocolized uh, interventions for the subpopulation, so our aim is to evaluate the effectiveness and safety of interventions for uh, concurrent alcohol and nicotine consumption. A clinical question is that uh, which interventions are beneficial in concurrent alcohol and nicotine consumption? The investigated population are adults, patients with concurrent harmful and um, harmful alcohol and nicotine dependence, and we will compare pharmacological and non-pharmacological interventions, uh, and also with combined interventions. The outcomes will be the following, tobacco, alcohol consumption, relapse rate, and hospital admission. According to our hypothesis, the combined, combined pharmacological and non-pharmacological interventions are the most effective in this subpopulation. Here you can see the search key, and uh, we are preparing the Prosper registration. And finally, my last project, I, uh, I got the opportunity to take part in a randomized control trial carried out by Clementina Ochkai, and the title of this uh, research is Recurrent Acute Pancreatic 
hepatitis prevention by the elimination of alcohol and cigarette smoking. Here you can see that the population uh, is patient hospitalized with alcohol-induced acute pancreatitis and after the randomization we will have a control and an intervention group. On the other side of the slide you can see that the protocol is already submitted and published in BMG journal. A few words about the, the intervention. The, in the intervention group the patients will receive um, short brief intervention for alcohol and nicotine consumption in every three months while in the control group they will have only a one year uh, visit without intervention and we, the closeout at, is at two years. And my role, finally my role in the trial, I took part in the development of the intervention protocol um, in the education for residents and uh, medical staff I am performing the interventions and coordinating patient involvement. We had 10, we have 10 patients so far at the ward. Uh, so here you can see the summary with my deadlines and plans. And thank you for your attention and I'm open to your questions. I just have a question that you have so many data. Do you plan to have a subgroup analysis based on the uh, type of uh, diseases? Yes, this is a very good question. We are planning to do it and uh, it is under discussion with the statistician. Unfortunately, we will have to have a more difficult methodology for this, uh, but we are trying to do it and we will see the results later. As you take a look on the IBD group patient, the intervention was not that robust than in a patient with GERD, for example. And what I uh, think is that the GERD patient include also the functional GI diseases. So, and as we know, the psychological intervention in such a patient has uh, effect. robust yeah. effects. On the other hand, uh, IBD patients are quite well diagnosed and the diagnosis is quite precise and it's a lifelong uh, disease uh, comparing to for example uh, ulcer peptic disease so I, I, I think uh, dividing into subgroups uh, m might be more useful for of this meta-analysis that's what I get congratulations for your work Thank you. Yes, this is very important. Unfortunately, um, in psychological literature, we have a lot of data in IBD. So this is a well um, researched uh, field. And unfortunately, in um, cirrhosis, for example, we have less article. So basically, it's not easy to have a subgroup analysis for these diseases because we have more or less, uh, very, very less uh, data on these subgroups. But yes, our plan is to have uh, subgroups on these diseases, but now at this stage, uh, we can have an overview of the diseases which can be found in a gastroenterology ward. So we can say that, yes, uh, we can provide psychological help to patients in the ward with, with very various diseases. <laughs>